ladies and gentlemen it's that time of week it is uh 10 to 5 here chicago 10 to 6 i hope i hear myself because i'm an amateur there it is mute that <laughs> how's everybody I, doing I, welcome to the show this is the pre uh show so we're just going to hang out with you guys a little bit and then we'll kick this puppy off uh right at 6 p.m eastern so what's up everybody how's everyone doing daniel welcome good to see you dude mr jem schofield what's new what's cooking uh i'm just happy to see our uh you know our pre flaskers here 360 grad we got dan uh there's some people here that we're a little bit worried about meaning they're not here yet grumpy penguin where's grumpy penguin um but i'm doing i'm doing well how about you ben how are you today hey sky london i like that name that's Hi. cool i'm My good thank you i'm yeah having having one of those days of just chasing i've got a big shoot next week and then i've got another norwegian oil rig thing two of them to do in a single trip oh my gosh more or less straight after which is great because i love that stuff but there's just a lot of a lot of organization between now and then so lots of calls and conference mm. calls and logistics and so I, on on which no i need to ask both of you a question have either of you two ever used the edelkrone wing no uh yes well I've tested it, and then I have a different version from another company. Okay. Yeah. And? Good? Bad? Um, on a really lightweight camera, uh, good. If you start putting uh -huh. stuff on it, then it just gets a little janky. I mean, a lot of it has to do with your tripods, you know, uh, legs. You really, I mean, you really have to spread them. That sounds wrong, but you know what I mean. You have to make sure that that the tripod legs are are really you know uh, wide. Yeah. Is that yeah? Because mm -hmm. you know because of the because of the center of gravity and all the other stuff. I just I, I I'm distracted because we have two new people here: Sky London and Scotsman. I mean those are those are two good handles. Just yeah, saying. yeah. Welcome, True, no, not even Scotsman. True Scotsman. Uh, mm. we're talking about a lot of stuff, true Scotsman. This is the pre flask show, so go get your uh single malt because we came here like blindly yeah. from uh Blue Scotsman. So, what are we talking about? Well, we're gonna Ben's gonna run the show tonight, but um, I should actually <laughs> I should read the title of this one. Yeah, I, I, was just thinking, I'm ready, I, better do that too. I changed the title a little bit. Sorry, Ben. I just uh, um, the way I've been that's plugging all it. Better is uh in a way we'll talk about kind of cheap versus expensive gear or affordable or budget versus expensive just kind of this whole thing right gentlemen it's kind yeah, of what we're that's it. exactly into. and i'm still distracted so sky london says hey guys real name so in high school i dated somebody named sky and my third kid's name is london so that's just bizarre i don't there even you know what to say about all that stuff um let Ben play the guitar. I don't know what that means, but yeah, let Ben play the guitar. I'm all for that. Come on. Maybe but, after we've got to the drinking part, that might happen. Hmm, around the campfire at NAB. <laughs> and I just put my acoustic upstairs. It's been sitting around here all the time. You guys are Too amazing. Uh, cool. Up oh, there, the grumpy penguin. There he is. Hello. Well, there she or there he is. Was so it a she? Did we ever figure that out? I don't know. Uh, okay. By the way, am I, am I, everyone in the chat, am I like unbelievably loud right now? Uh, you're fine for me because I turned down the volume. When I do voiceovers, it's fine. <laughs> and then when I get on here, you're like, oh my <laughs> gosh. <laughs> no, you sound good. Good. Good, good, good. good. We got Bill checking in from Chi Town, uh, up, the Bill? Windy City. Nice. Uh, I've tested Black Film uh, Guild. I've tested the LF very briefly. Uh, beautiful image. Camera showed up to me in Chinese. It took me 45 minutes to get it into English. Um, verdict's still out. I don't have it with me anymore, but I hope to have another play with it at some point. Um, okay, we got Tyler Buffalo Trace from South Carolina. Hi, C Films. Um, Welcome. 
Kim. Oh my God, Jago. Jago yeah. is here. Ah, oh, very. Exciting. Jago is my very good mate, and Jago and I work together loads. So if Jago does anything, I do with drones. But he's just a great shooter and all round good egg. Awesome. Uh, hello. Nice. Uh, Sky London says no volume is good on you, uh, Caleb. So good, good, good. you're good. Uh, we got High C Films finally catching us live. Welcome to the Cameron Flask. What do we call it? Live stream, I guess. Ooh, I gotta, I gotta figure out where that AF is. Dang it! What <laughs> jumping, the mother? I'm so jumping. I just, I uh, well, we can get to that another time. I guess we still have time. Um, Fuji lenses. I've been talking to um, mm, mm. uh, what's his YouTube channel? He's like worked with a ton of Fuji gear. Um, come on, come on. Anyway, we I'll, I'll figure it out here in a second. Oh, I <laughs> got to switch I, you over. No, no, tell me. Fuji lenses. I had to switch you over. I apologize. Um, you you and I had talked a little bit about this. You have the 56.12. What Fuji lenses do you have right now? I have four lenses that I own. I have actually two of the kit lenses, which are the 18 to 55, the two eights to the fours. Um, and that's just because I bought a second camera body, and it just made sense to have two of those kit lenses. Um, mm. I'm thinking maybe at some point the XE2 could go into my middle uh, child's her hands because she's into photography. Got so it. I was like, you know, if she switches from like a really old Rebel, which she has right now, then it might make a lot of sense for her to just have that 18 to 55 as a starter lens. Um, that is very much kind of like my primary video based lens because it has image stabilization in it. They are working on a 16 to 80 F4 all the way through the range. So that's going to basically be your essentially your 24 to 105 ish right. kind of lens. Um, and that's supposed to have image stabilization as well. The, the other three lenses that I have, I have the 27 millimeter pancake, the little Per little one. That's an f2.8. Right. That's kind of like my street photography lens. Um, the 5612 I just got with the X-T3. That's really a portrait lens. I'm not buying that. I didn't buy that really for uh, video. I bought that for photography. So that's the purpose. And then I just got the lens that I'm using right now, which is the 35. And I wound up getting the two not mm. that one four. And the reason I got it is because even though there's that je ne sais quoi, you know, on those on the one four on then the 56 one two that, you know, obviously you get better bokeh, but there's just something about the image. Um, the F2 version of the 35 is weather resistant and coupled with the X-T3, then they have a weather sealed body, weather sealed lens. It's a great focal length to have. And it's nice with a little ND filter for stuff like, uh, you know, locked off stuff for camera and flask because it's just, it's the right focal length. I actually kind of wish I had a 23 as well. Yeah. I could reach over, but it's not a zoom lens anyway, so it doesn't yeah. really matter. Um, and Guys, for the first, my, my camera's just flamed out. Sorry. I'm just, yeah, it has. Uh, and, and then Caleb, for the first time, I've gotten the, um, uh, the, I don't think it's released yet. I don't even know if I'm supposed to talk about it, but I have the Fujifilm dummy battery solution for the small HD focus. So oh, nice. I'm actually powering my X-T3 off of that. And the, the monitor doesn't even have to be on. You can just I plug know, it I in. I love that about that thing, yeah. So awesome, yeah. So so hopefully my, my picture won't go out today. I actually didn't check the battery. I, it was up on a charger, so I'm pretty sure it's a hot brick. So we'll see what happens. Nice. Um, God, look at it. It's blowing up in here. Uh, Caleb, let's just do some shout outs to some people. Let's. If there's any questions while, uh, while Ben sorts out picture. Um, what do we got? Uh, we got people sipping on bullet rye. Let's get yep. weird. Kevin says, <laughs> okay. <laughs> I saw that. <laughs> Welcome, <laughs> Kevin. <laughs> Lakeshore yeah. studio also from Chicago. How about this weather? Just nice freezing rain. Mm. You know, that's nice. Um, what else? What else? Uh, people talking Fuji. We'll never know the grumpy paint. Wait, uh, we'll never know the grumpy penguins gender, which is totally fine with me. Uh, Dan, quick question. Any recommendations on the B cam for alternative angles? What's your A cam, Dan? Tell me again. Fuji XT30. Not even a question. Just do it. Get over with it. Get over yourself and just get an XT30 for your B camera. 
if you're using Fuji as your A camera, that X-T30 they just announced for $900 US is amazeballs. If you're okay with 1080, because he does, I believe Daniel does weddings. So that way you kind of sketch for 4K for the 10 minute limit or whatever. Oh, he's talking about for, yeah, if he's going to be shooting video. If you're doing 4K, but I think he might be, I think he's a... A 1080 or Yeah. He's in the 1080 club. Uh, not always, though, I don't think. Let me see. Grumpy, thanks for the kind words there. And then uh, where, where'd it go? Chat's moving today. Um, shoot. Someone someone just switched from Canon to A7 III. Okay. Got some beer drinkers happening. Going to Longboard. Mail, lol. Okay, so it's official. There we go. All right, well, too much. Yep. You're unbelievable, 360 grad. You are so not politically correct. I appreciate <laughs> that, actually. Um, <laughs> oh, man. It's amazing. Um, Do you ever think we'll see Confinity in a rental shop? I think it's a great question for you. Uh, you know, uh, it's a question for me. Well, I can give you my well, you, take. You shot it. with them, right? Yeah. I mean, it's a tough one. I mean, we're barely seeing black magic cameras in rental shops yeah and they and they have a presence in this country the first thing you have to do to be in a rental shop is you have to be a camera company and i don't mean you make cameras you have to have a professional support component to your business and uh i don't think infinity does so um i don't think we'll see them in rental houses until that happens nobody's going to put them on the shelves and rent them out unless they have pro support uh would you gentlemen agree with that i think so Exactly. I just, I saw, a, I'm on one of the Kinefinity groups on Facebook and I saw a guy this week that the pins for the lens communication had sheared on the lens mount. Yikes. And he's just, where do I send it? Who do I speak to? Does anyone have an email address? Mm. <laughs> you know, if you're, if you're doing, I mean, like last week I had a problem with the C200 and I dropped it and uh, I've had to send that back to Canon, but the support oh my is God. just, it's like, if you're in CPS, that's like three days and the thing's back with you. Yeah. That you two were talking about earlier. Oh, shoot. We got to go. Yep. Yeah, we got to go. Okay, let's do it. Okay, boss. It's uh, it's your show today, Ben. You're in. All right. Welcome back. Oh, look at the guitar with the nice little shadow and oh, two we'll guitars. See how long this... Yeah. Yeah. That's what mm. the guitar reference was about before. Did you know? No. And then anyway. we have and we have anchors. Oh, I'm excited. Go ahead. Let's go. Yeah. All, right. <laughs> All right. So welcome to episode 17. Mm -hmm. 17 of yes, camera and flask and we do this every single week we uh, get together the three of us so we have uh jem over on the west coast of the us jem say good evening introduce yourself oh uh, good evening i'm jem schofield of the c47 this is my channel and these are two of my bestest friends in the whole world and we all make content different types of content and i'm excited to be here with them yeah. I sound like a sense. robot. No, I you do. Did. It's all, I'm being genuine. There's no, I'm not being disingenuous. <laughs> uh, and I'm excited about our drinking and our talking today. So it's going to be great. Good, good. It's an interesting subject coming up. But before yeah. we get onto that and the, uh, the pivotal part of the show, mm. <laughs> go back to Caleb and uh, say good evening to you in the, or good afternoon to you in the Midwest. How are things, my friend? Good. It's 5.03. So I'm, I'm ready. I'm ready to... Uh, partake in a beverage good well mm. let's get right on with that in fact let's let's stay with you caleb okay jump in this is the the most important part of the show is what are we drinking what are we greasing the conversation with this week well we are drinking i'm 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 growing up today uh oh. those who have watched the show the veterans here uh karen flask have seen quite a <laughs> variety of beverages from me um <laughs> I, I don't buy a lot. I used to not buy as much. So I would just kind of run through everything and then just anything that wasn't something I've used before. But today I grew up a little bit. Let me get all fancy here. If I put something right here, it like gets crazy blown out. This is my uh, lighting. So I'm going to go right uh, into my armpit today. Yeah. Oh my God. Look at me. Look at oh, me. Wow. It's, You're a wow. big boy. I'm you are a big boy. Age, hasn't he? Look at this. Yeah. Uh, like, uh, he's 16, he's 16 years 16. old. I know. I'm so proud of him. Look at, I mean, that's, I mean, come on, guys. That's something else for Caleb's. And that's you've had some over $30. <laughs> and you've had some of them. 
<laughs> yeah, three times thirty dollars, dude. You've had some already. I'm excited I about this. I, I, um, yeah, there's a story there, but I'll let I'll let other people get through their beverages first, and I'll get out. All right, of you, crazy. you get you get pouring with that. Get ready, Jim. What yes, are you yes, on this yes. week? Well, okay. So if you've uh, followed the show at all, uh, you'll know that one of my favorites in the world is this one right here. Oh, I gotta find that stupid point. Is uh, hmm. Kulela Twelve Year? Um, it's smoky and sweet. And uh, actually, um, uh, unbeknownst to me, two purchases were made in the last week, uh, one by my wife and one by Caleb's wife. And what did our wives get us? Lagavulin 16. So, so it's insane. Uh, so, and, and by the way, it's not as if I've never had Lagavulin 16. And um, well, this is actually... Uh, one of my favorites as well. In fact, if you like Kulela, you'll like Lagavulin 16. And if you like Lagavulin 16, you'll like Kulela. They're not the same, but, uh, but they both have kind of the non-medicinal components that you would find in a Lerfroig, but they definitely have some smoke, some peatiness, and they definitely have some sweetness. And I would say that that's the way I'm gonna describe it. And what about you, my fine friend, Mr. Ben, while I try to open this thing and take off my glasses because I'm an old man? Go for it. All right. Well, I am, I'm really seriously running out of decent scotch at home now. This is the last of my, my bottles and bottles that I ended up with last summer. This is all that is left, Jeez. which will go wow. now. Well, so I won't I'm be drinking to... much yeah, today because I have to go to an OMPA meeting, which is the uh, Media Production Association here. So I will be driving. So I'm going to have just a nip today. Uh, yeah. So I'm, but... I'm drinking the Island, the Island 21, but I'm heading to the UK tomorrow evening. And I'm bringing my kids with me this week because it's their half-term holiday next week. And that means that I get two bags, two extra bags of allowance so I can load up with scotch and bring it back. Um, well, here we are. Here we yes, go. We need to what you got, All Caleb? Right. Oh, I was just going to say real quick, uh, the story is really funny about your wife got you that. My wife got me this for Valentine's Day. Yes. And the night before she got it, or the night, the day she got it, I went out with a friend and had it for the first time at a bar, ordered it, came yes. home. I was like, man, it's so good. And so she pulled it out of the closet early. It's hilarious that you got it. There's uh, so many. Th I asked for it for Christmas and I didn't get it. And then Valentine's Day came and we went out to lunch and I was drinking Lagavulin 16. So not completely unlike your story. There's a lot of similarities. Yeah. And then the next day, here it is. There Just it is. Couple, All right. Put a drop Cheers. of water in there. Cheers, yeah. everybody. Cheers. All right. I'm looking Cheers. forward to this one. Episode Let 17. Let us know what you're drinking as well mm -hmm. in the chat. Mm. Always interesting to see. Back over to you, Ben. You're going to go ahead and you're, right. you're steering this ship today. It's your so turn. This week, this week, we are talking about kind of how this explosion of new products, new manufacturers who are producing really good gear at the mid and the lower end price-wise of the market. And mm. sort of which kind of products have we shifted our allegiances over to in, in those areas, I think is kind of the... The interesting thing and which of those products are we still kind of trusting the old guards you know the big names so let's start off maybe with let's talk cameras because we were talking about this just at the beginning of the show so let's go back to that so in terms of cameras mm. that space hasn't been infiltrated too much with this mm. kind of explosion of these brands there are exceptions one of which being um the kinefinity set of mm -hmm. cameras which we were just talking about and if, if you didn't um catch that at the just at the end of the pre-show what we were saying was with those cameras and treating them as professional camera systems and would they be in rental houses i mean so that camera is really interesting the images that i've seen off it are really nice it seems to be very flexible but for me that lack of support just would make it a, a no-no for commercial work what do you two think in that? And are there any, any other brands that have come into that space on the camera end? I mean, I, I, I would agree. It's scary using something, especially uh, something that uses SSDs. You know, SD right. cards have a certain level of this is very simple. You format them, you record to them. But SSDs is kind of another level of scary because like formatting issues and whatnot can get weird. 
Mm-hmm. Um, would would you say Black Magic is on that list? I mean, if, depending on how far yeah. back they go, right? When they showed up I, on the scene, I feel like a lot of people are using Black Magic cameras now. I, but I I haven't talked to anyone who's had to go through technical support with that and say have a camera mm. sent back. But I do know um, about a rental house that um, I was talking to. I think actually with you guys um, in NAB either a few years ago. And I can't remember which one of the Blackmagic cameras it was, but they were talking about the same. They couldn't rent that thing out at the time. It was one of the early models because it was just frying cards. I think they're an LA-based company. And they were putting uh, putting cards in it, and the things were just melting, like literally fusing into the body of the thing. Jeez. So they actually had, had a, a listing saying, like, we'll rent the thing to you, but we guarantee nothing. So you cannot use it for commercial work. You can rent it off us to play mm. with but we can't recommend that you use it. So I would say that they do fall into that category. Maybe not, not so much now, because I know they, they've things have moved on because that's sort of two, three years ago, and those guys move really quickly. Mm. Mm. It's an interesting space. I mean, uh, one of the things I'm starting to see, just to acknowledge what you said about SD cards, Caleb, is um, one company in particular, which is Angelbird, they're actually making what they call match packs that are basically tested for and made to be a pair for a particular camera system. So I just got the 128s and the 64s in for the X-T3. I haven't tested them yet, they're still in the box. Um, And so I guess we'll see how that all, that you got them right there. Yeah. And so I think that that's pretty interesting. I guess, you know, time will only tell in terms of the reliability of those and uh, how good they are. but yeah, I think we go back to black magic. I mean, if we really want to talk about disruption, um, even though they protect their upper end products considerably now, really it's, uh, you know, we've had these waves, uh, obviously DV and the DV cameras, PD 150s, DVX 100s, the, you know, the, the 5D Mark II was a huge disruptor in the Canon, uh, I mean, in the camera world in terms of what people were using for production. I mean, all of a sudden you had high-end DPs who were using a DSLR camera. And so I think that um, a lot of it has to do with the the confidence. And when it comes to cameras, the camera is sort of the center of the universe for us. And so we don't want to F with that too much. We're willing to take some chances. But when it comes down to it for a client job where you don't have a second chance, and there's a real budget there, then, you know, you don't want to experiment then. It's when you're doing your own projects or it doesn't really matter where you can yeah. go ahead and try that stuff. But I mean, I think that the 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 first and even the second little pocket camera from Blackmagic were, were definitely disruptors in their own right. But I still feel to this day that Blackmagic isn't really a camera company per se, because they don't have professional support. They don't really... They don't, they don't run their company, and, and some companies haven't done that until recently. They haven't, even big camera companies haven't put that support system in. So I think that that's really important in that space. But then there's a lot of other industries that have been disrupted over the years, uh, you know, in terms of camera movement stuff and other things that I'll have, I guess, Ben get into. But I do want to talk about things like jibs and, and other things, and, and then, of course, lighting and some other categories that I think have changed uh, considerably over time. You're gonna see me zoom out, so I'm gonna click on somebody else while I just, <laughs> okay. I'm, I'm, gonna open, I'm gonna open up my ND for a second. So back right. to you, Ben. All yep. right, enjoy it. Well, so, so camera wise, I think we kind of conclude that generally we are sticking with the, the big names, just more through support um, than anything else, the fact that there is that backup there. So then going on to say for lighting, I mean, that's just been this insane explosion of fixtures over the last three or four years. And it and the quality of those and the, the quality of the lights and the uh, TLCI and uh, values going up and up and up with all of that stuff and really pushing things on, the costs coming down and down and down. And now, Caleb, this is very much your kind of world. So I'll pick that up on the lighting. Yeah, I mean, yeah, China primarily is just killing it. Um. The, the problem is there's so much new lighting and a lot of it's really, really bad. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, like like RGB right now, everyone has an RGB LED, but uh, they don't have any saturation control. 
-hmm. often you can't even mix them with like with uh you know warm cool it's just <laughs> red green blue <laughs> you could just have the hue um but i mean aperture obviously gem and i were talking on the phone like they've done they they came on the scene and now they're kind of getting pretty established and i feel their innovation is is maybe uh slow it a little bit i think their next generation is going to tell us a lot about where they're going but uh at first they were just breakneck brighter better yeah. cri um and now there's all these other companies I, there's a light uh that's a pre-production that i have that uh might become my new my new main lighter at least for a smaller fixture it's it's incredible um lots of really interesting innovation there so but they, Lots they've of been one of those brands that have has kind of moved up in terms of their, their kind of how they're perceived by industry and they're they're kind of not at that kind of lower end now. They're they're yeah. in certainly in the mid. And in terms of a trustworthy brand, they're they're really up there. And I remember when I mean, we've talked a few times about NAB and how there's that kind of area at the back of Central where there's a lot of the Asian companies that are sort of fairly new to market and seeing those kind of come forward over the years and DJI I think the first year first or second year that I was at NAB DJI was this tiny little mm -hmm. Chinese company at, at the back that no one had heard of and then you see the size of their stand the last time I was there it's sort of one of the biggest ones in there so it's, it's rapid rapid change and in terms of those other brands I mean which are the other brands that you see as that have, have made that rise yeah. Oh, I mean, it's, uh, I have to do this now. So Dan, Kate, let's say all three of us give a shout out to Kate, who's getting into wedding videography. And uh, Kate, yeah. we're Hi, glad Kate. you're here. Glad you're here at the show. Awesome. Make sure you ask questions. We are here to hopefully answer some of oh, them. And, and Kate, Dan's invited me to come and stay for the photography show at the NEC. I don't know if he's mentioned this yet, but. Oh, now she's terrified. Okay. Now it's, now it's all over. Kate, um, I'm Kate here so further uh, up in the chat. Oh, this is uh, Dan, Daniel Moore Photography. So his oh, wife is, uh, yeah. Nice. Uh, and and Sky, I would, uh, I would also agree with you. I think the GH4 was a disruptor. I think that it, mm. it definitely uh, made some change there. So, um, so other companies, I mean, Aperture is a perfect example, and so is DJI. They're both Chinese companies that um, have approached the way they're doing things in exactly the opposite way of, let's say, a company like Kinfinity, who we've been talking about. And if you look at Kinfinity as a, uh, we lost uh, Ben, but I'm sure he'll come mm -hmm. back. Right, I'm um, still here on audio. I need to. Okay, great. To yeah. So, I might need to so, out. so if you. Um, you know, if you if you think about how those companies have sort of set themselves up, I, I don't want to don't want to say they've Americanized themselves because that's the wrong way to say it. But they have um, they've created and kind of set themselves up in a in a as a global brand. And you know, perception wise, we look at them and we say they're you know they're a big company. Um, you know, they have obviously a lot of money behind them, and then they have generally faces to the brand. I mean, Aperture is, come, is, is somewhat unique in the sense that Ted Sim, you know, kind of was the face, but he's also very much behind the scenes in terms of the business side of it. He's moved on recently to Indie Mogul in terms of a content creator, but he's still very much a part of that company. And so I think that that's really interesting. And I think that business model means that there are a lot of other companies that we might see coming out in the future that if they can get that formula right, then in all of these different categories, we could see some companies that could get really big really quickly in terms of stuff. I mean, I think that one of the most interesting, we, we can, well, we, let's just talk about this. Who the heck had heard of Rode microphones until like six years ago or seven years ago? You know, they were, they were there. They existed in the audio world. And then this convergence of many things came together, but we have to acknowledge that a lot of what's happening to us today in a very big way would not have happened if it wasn't for the DSLR revolution. Um, the yeah. fact that cameras came out that cost two to three thousand dollars that used to cost forty to eighty thousand dollars that would give us the same kind of depth of field options and you know somewhat to a certain degree the image. Sure, they didn't have the same 
you know, uh, dynamic range. They didn't have some of the other features that high-end cinema cameras had. But it was the beginning of the change. And I think that Rode came in at a really perfect time. It was also a resurgence for companies like Zeiss, who were obviously selling lenses to, to professional photographers. But who knew that their entire business would totally change? And uh, it's like we have picture in picture Ben in the middle. I don't even know what's going on. I, it's like some somebody shrank his head. Like uh, what? What? Yeah, my I. So my C two hundred is back with Canon. Just to explain what's going on here, and apologies okay. for sort of dipping. Oh, out. we don't care. No, it's totally fine. I'm having. To, I've had to rig a kind of jerry rig a uh, my Sony A seven, and oh, okay. it's kind of working, but it keeps flaming out for some reason. And it's mm. the USB power. It doesn't seem to be taking the USB power properly. Yeah. So um, yep. I'm going to try yep. and switch over to the webcam. So I'll just bear with yep. you. I'll be back shortly. No, no, meanwhile, it's fine. Meanwhile, I'm, my uh, I'm still listening. <laughs> your what? My camera arm is dying. So the camera what? keeps sliding over to the. Uh, All right, let's figure out what brands we're using here, and maybe we need to uh -oh. stay away from them. Maybe these are some of the disruptors. So yeah, I mean, Deity <laughs> is a disruptor to a, a, to a degree. I think it's early days for us to see how far they go. They were part of Aperture. They still kind of are. Um, they're making good quality products, and they're going to do the same thing that Aperture did because they're all part of that family of, of products. Um, but I do have to say there's a, there's a point in time where there's diminishing returns because some of the bigger companies do get it, and they start to compete. And so we're starting to see some microphone solutions now from Sennheiser that look great. They're really small. You know, they're 2.4 gigahertz-based mics and, and you know, transmitters and receivers. And those bigger companies, if they decide to, they can also compete. Because remember, most of their manufacturing isn't happening anywhere else. The biggest problem we have, and I guess, Caleb, you probably agree with this, is that you have to understand that as soon as you scale a company to a certain size, then it's just economics. You have to have a certain price point for your product Otherwise, you can't keep that company alive. You can't yeah. do the marketing and the promotion, and you can't do one of the most important things, which is R&D. And so when you take a look at a company like FreeFly Systems and you know what they did with the Movi, we sh for sure see a lot of disruption in terms of gimbal technology. But I think that what they do is they try to stay lean, and they focus on the mid to high end of the production market. And they're not pretending that they're trying to compete. Yes, they have a little smartphone solution. That's their gateway drug. Um, but then their next jump is a pretty big jump. And I kind of perceive them a little bit more in the realm of a, a larger camera company, maybe not quite an Aerie, but you know, they're they're kind of in that in that space. And it's not like Aerie's having any problem selling or putting sky panels out into the world right now for high-end production and television work, right? Mm -hmm. These disruptors are not the thing that are gonna take away their particular business. Yeah. It's gonna take away business from Aperture and from um, you know Westcott and some of these other companies. So um, it's interesting. It really is. And if I can talk about uh, Deity for a second, I, yeah. think, I think they are going to uh, upheave the audio industry more than Aperture done, has done with lighting. Interesting. I really think they're cutthroat, man. Um, their main dude, Andrew over there, mm -hmm. uh, if you go to NAB and talk to him, first of all, he'll be at the booth, like yeah. not never peeing or drinking water. And he is he's a legitimate, you know, uh, production sound guy. Like he's on sets. He has been on sets and he's also designing all of this stuff. Yeah, so he's, he's not just a product manager, yeah, right? He's like yeah. a real audio guy. Like yeah. when he's not when he's not working on a PCB design, he's boom operating or on a recording gig. So he's super legit, um, and he's bringing all that to uh, the design. Like behind me in a case, I have their new uh, wireless setup, and it's it's crazy, crazy good. Yeah. And I, and it what's what's interesting, and you know, I'll send it back to Ben, and this might be something we can talk about um is the whole back in the day this was all very specialized right um there were the, you couldn't do quantity you you, you the prices were higher whereas now i wonder if now that things have opened up i mean look at what adamus has done with their pricing on the ninja 5 and the new shinobi 
Yeah. They're like they're, 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 they're going for bulk. Right. Um, and quantity. Aperture is kind of the same way. DD seems to be kind of going that way. But yeah, DD is killing it, man. Uh, compared to Rode right now, their tech is just outrageous. But don't you think also, Caleb, that they're, um, that one of the things that's starting to happen with those companies that you just mentioned, and, and I put small HD into there too. And by the way, yes, Fitech does just buy companies, but they are they are starting to become very competitive too. I mean, it's mm. it's it's a I, I, I'll see um, light panel and small HD uh, deals on BNH that are ridiculous sometimes. I mean, you know, they're yeah. dropping the price for a short period of time for a, a lot, you know, a lot of money is is being taken off, and I think that. The interesting thing now is that it's not just about the quantity thing. It's that the tech is pretty consistently good. I'm not talking about RGB LEDs. That's a whole other subject that we can have a, an entire show on because it's such a, a moving target and it's really the Wild West right now. Um, but I just think that overall, the quality of product is pretty amazing. I mean, look, and, and Trevor just brought it up, and, and Caleb and I talk about it all the time, Sm you know, small rig. Let's talk about a company that's disrupting in terms of what they're doing. I mean, you know, hmm, I, 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 my X-T3 is sitting in a small rig right now. I mean, it's really kind of kooky what's going on. And then who's the next small rig? What do you got, Ben? Oh, you're muted, buddy. You're muted. <laughs> I love the look. What? You can't hear me? You're still muted. I can't hear or at you. At least there's no sound. He's troubleshooting. He, yeah, he, he's troubleshooting. he just held up like a small rig EVF mount or holder or something like that. Yeah. We'll get him back on the audio. Um, Caleb, small rig. I mean, crazy, right? It's, it's outrageous. Um. Do you remember when that kind of stuff, like custom cages? First of all, are cages kind of a, a newish thing? I and mean, they've been around for a while. But when did when did we start seeing like camera specific cages? I think it's the last year and a half to two years in 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 bulk. Because remember, we used to see like Red Rock would do like something or so yeah, an enormous you know, thing. and it'd be like and and we're like we can it's a universal cage yeah. and it's like this size camera or this size camera i mean it's like uh small rig just released a cage for the a6400 which might be a good uh camera for you as your b camera daniel for your a7 III, maybe um and that was 33 dollars on a pre-order for, for a custom yeah. cage Yes. <laughs> it's ridiculous. And by the way, like it's it's kooky what uh, small rig is doing. I mean, I I just remember the old days, and it's it's kind of become like you're getting almost bespoke. You can put in uh, your your audio's back, Ben. There he is. You can get yeah, like you can hear me. Yeah, you can get bespoke okay. rigs and cages practically. In like a year, you'll just be able to say, I want this. And, you know, the new 3D printers can print in, in metal, you know, in metals. And you'll be like, I just want, um, I want a, a customized cage with this, this, and this. And they'll be like, it's a hundred dollar upcharge and they'll just print it for you. You know, it's getting yeah. crazy. Yeah. No, those guys are nuts. Mm. They have for every camera almost, they have like three different cages. <laughs> yeah, you I want know. one with the grip? You want one that has like a full cage, half cage? What do you want? <laughs> We got it. But even, this is exa this this is exactly an example of that because this is for the C two hundred. It's for the monitor yeah. um, mount on it because the one that comes with it takes up loads of room. Even when you strip mm. it down, you end up having to put for little pouches that I travel with. I have to put that in three. It's ridiculous. Mm, okay. So I just, so I got that. But they have a version that uses none of their components. One that uses half of theirs. And then there's people designing new stuff as well for that. So that's one product that's not uh, for one product for one solution just for mounting that. There's three different products for it already and more coming. Amazing. <laughs> and for nothing. And Vladimir said that you're using Deity as your microphone solution. <laughs> he's just, he's taking the piss. Uh, <laughs> there's a lot of people taking the piss in general today. I love it. Um, Man. I deserve it. I don't no, know what's great. Is going on with my stuff, uh, <laughs> and typically it's my week as well that it all goes wrong. Can so. you can you imagine what will happen 
if or what would happen if small rig had a ted sim and they pulled oh that. my gosh dude. i mean just forget about it everybody I mean, needs like, a ted i need a ted i wish i had a ted if i had a ted in my house i'd be like yeah just let ted take care of it i mean he's got <laughs> he's got more energy than anybody um he's a great guy he's yeah. really cool yeah the okay. roof's leaking yeah. let's fix it yeah <laughs> Yeah, we're going to take care of it. And we'll go get some Dave's hot chicken afterwards. It's going to be awesome. <laughs> you told me about that. That was amazing. Oh, uh, he's uh, He was so good. I mean, he's time, good. what's good? Yeah, um, I want to be like Ted when I grow up too. Yeah. And I'm growing up. <laughs> Great dude. Okay, good. We need more Ted's in the world. We really do. Yep. Um, a company yeah. just reached out to me the other day. They're looking for somebody for their lighting division. I think they thought that Ted might be available or something. Like, no, <laughs> no, not really. Yeah. Did you say, uh, but, but I am? You, yeah. The, I, I don't think you want this gig. It's okay. It's not the right gig for okay. you. Keep going on your trips. No, it was um, meaning for you. I was, it wasn't meaning for me. <laughs> yeah. No, 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 no. I don't want to work for a company. I like working with companies, but I don't want to work for a company. That, that ship sailed a long time ago. Um, so what other disruption categories do we have? I mean, we can talk about things like, you know, I don't want to go too far back, but there were companies that changed the industry. Like I mm. couldn't find a jib that was affordable. I was telling cable, uh, Caleb this earlier. And I, I found this company out of Indiana called Kessler and they were the only company that I could afford a crane from. I was like, I, okay. So I, you know, I got a crane from them for, for a project. And, uh, and, and look how different it is now in terms of what that industry is like. So what other... It just became a premium brand in that. So when well, you talk about yeah. that being kind of the affordable thing, and then those guys are now kind of at the top end of that market. Yeah, because they mm. basically pushed out higher end market. They were making a good quality product. Um, and once yeah. they got distribution in there, which they didn't have for a long time, uh, yeah, they they kind of became the high end, and then people are like, Kessler's so expensive, but they yeah. don't remember that. Yeah, so that's weird. Oh. Mm. So you, mm. do you want to so go which, by which categories, other Ben? Do we, well, I was going to say, just before we maybe go on to that, do mm. we see any other brands that are kind of in that kind of emerging space that we expect to be sort of moving up to that completely trustworthy, higher end, oh. taking business away? Who do, who do we... Who do we spot at the moment that's going that way? Well, hopefully, I'm really the man for this question. Yeah, hopefully, Aperture keeps doing what they've been doing, and they have stayed true to it, and that's budget. You know, yeah. Ted at NAB. I would say, year. like, uh, good. Yeah, I mean, I would say that they're like kind of there, they're there in terms of that. But who do you see that kind of oh. coming up, sort of take that kind of level? Hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, Didi's on their way. I'm trying to think of other other any. any uh, any other companies there is one lighting company i would keep an eye on bowling b-o-l-i-n-g mm -hmm. um they're fig they're sorting out some kinks but they're doing stuff i haven't seen anywhere uh like they they've got they're not like copy and pasting anyone else's stuff uh, i think falcon eyes i've talked about them a lot if they yep. got their stuff in order um they could be really big yeah They've kind of been on the cusp of that for a couple of years, though. At least I remember yeah. walking around their, their uh, stand at NAB with you like three years ago, I guess. Mm. They're, they they're, really they're not in the product. corner anymore. They're a little closer to the middle. Yeah, I think, I mean, it's going to have to do with how much they're willing to invest overall. I mean, Confinity keeps coming up, and John just mentioned Confinity again. I think the problem is that, and this is just my take on it, if Confinity came to the market four years ago and they came out with a, a raw camera that was, you know, uh, you know, a, a, a fourth or a sixth of the price of a, a red camera, mm. then, then they would have become a disruptor just by default, even if they had, you know, shit for brains marketing. Um, but because they're coming into the market now where you have a C200, which has a CFAST slot and it's a $7,500 camera that shoots in, at least a version of RAW. And now we have ProRes RAW, which inevitably, and, and Blackmagic RAW and will inevitably come into a lot of other cameras and other workflows. Um, they're not as special in terms of what they're offering because there's other things that are under $10,000, which will give people options like that. 
Mm. And, you know, and then you add things like, you know, ProRes RAW over HDMI when that comes out. And it's going to be hard for a company like that, I think, to really compete in the market because um, price point wins to a degree, uh, but it, it doesn't win everything. And, you know, I don't, I don't, I just, if they can get their act together and get some amazing marketing together, great. But I don't know if they can and do it. Um, I'm sorry. I'm looking outside. It's like hailing here for the first time ever since I've lived here. It's like it's like coming down. It's like the end of the world is happening. Um, so that's enough for me to say about that. But I mean, there are a lot of companies I think Ben that can get into that disruption level. But then what happens is they become the regular company, and I don't think you can do it anymore unless you do it in a similar way to a company like Aperture. I also think that the key to the castle is selling through education and any mm. company that does that consistently will have a marketplace. Um, and, and Aperture does that better than almost anybody right now. Don't you do think? You, do you think mm -hmm. that's going to be important going forward? Like it's no longer good enough to make something good. You need to like get out there and, and uh, do some kind of comp content creation or yes. at least like, like pound sure. influencers Absolutely. with it all. Oh, a million percent. I mean, I, I, I still think that Miller tripods make some of the best. Uh, they invented the fluid head, by the way. But I think they make some of the best tripods, uh, best fluid heads on the market. Their tripods are okay, but their fluid heads are amazing. But they are pretty yeah. horrible when it comes to social media. They have no, you know, real selling through education. And I think that it's really really hard if you don't have that component right now because you have to create community to a certain degree right and um mm -hmm. and i think that i think all of the brands save for small rig which is doing it in a totally different way um they're all creating community they're all doing something where they're selling through education they're they're making their brand sticky and if they're teaching you something and they just mention their product sort of in passing as they're teaching you craft or something else, then it's, um, I think it's, I think it's the way you kind of have to do it. If I was mm. brought on to a company, that would be the first thing I would do. I'd say, what's your, your great products? Good. Let's go ahead and find a face for those products and let's start creating educational content and create community. N no question about yeah. it. For sure. Yeah, for sure. Should we, should we do a little roundup of, of categories where we think there are interesting interesting brands and things coming through and things changing? So we maybe start with lenses. We've not really talked about too much yeah. and what's what happened there. So we'll start with just with Sigma. You know, it's, from my stills photography background, those guys were in the absolute kind of budget end of that market forever. Mm. And in those last seven, eight years, they've just shot up and become a viable alternative initially to um to the main brands but now a lot of people preferring those to to the canon glass for example liking the look of that stuff um high-end better prices really good performance but then this massive explosion in cine glass over the last few years and again particularly from china mm -hmm. so that's an interest an interesting space and, and there's there's more and more product coming on month by month and NAB will be interesting again to see what comes out. But what have you spotted in the, those in particular, the, the glass sector? Yeah. So, shout out to everyone who mentioned Sigma. I know there's a lot of people who are bringing that up. Love um, stuff. Yeah. yeah. I'd say, uh, Leawa. I've talked about them in the past. They're making they're some exploding. really interesting stuff and they're, they're, right they're really getting out there. They're going to turn all their lenses into cinema options like mm -hmm. full fledged rehoused versions. Um, SLR magic, I think is actually trying. <laughs> it sounds really mean, but they're actually uh, working on. Um, they've had those little tiny cinema lenses, quote unquote, yep. Yep. that are just kind of mushy. Mm -hmm. They feel kind of like C mount lenses, but uh, they're really getting after it with their new micro primes. I think they're called. Um, well, they that and that market's kind of open again now because have Vader mm -hmm. gone? I think I don't know. They I, seem to. I thought they were. They to, they so they kind of, they. I think they kind of have. I mean, Ryan is doing other stuff now, and sure, I, I don't. Right? I, 
Uh, his baby, the rental online rental, make your own no, rent your stuff. I don't think he's share grid. He's the other one. He's the rental. He's the lens one. There's a lens one that Ryan's part oh. of. Um, yeah, I mean the lens market. I mean it's just awesome. It's awesome because it's not just one lens, right, Caleb? From one company, there yeah. we're at the point now where you're getting a, a family of lenses. So you you can actually go in and you know, invest in four to six focal lengths from a smaller company and have a, a look and a feel. And and some of those companies are really serious about optics. I mean, it's not like they're just throwing shit together. They're really putting some good stuff together. Um, what are some of your favorites? What what do you think disrupts Caleb right now? Well, I think what uh, Rokanon or Sam Yang or whatever are doing, they're trying to do autofocus, which mm -hmm. it's not going so great unless you do stills. <laughs> yeah. But if they figure it out, I mean, can you imagine a full set of really fast like Sony and Canon RF mount alternative lenses? That'd be pretty sick. Uh, like And like you said, there's so many, there's more than you can count. Like, um, what is it, Miticon? That company has a full yeah. set of like really nice little primes. Yep. Mm -hmm. So you're right. That's really exciting because usually it's been like they got one good lens and then a bunch of garbage glass. But like you said, they've they're doing like little sets. Um, I want to see some more anamorphic stuff. Yep. Like SLR yeah. Magic has has the adapters, which are okay. You know, we've got uh, what is it, Orion? Uh, Adam? Adam? What is it? Shoot, the new the the cool kids. Adam, I, would not, I wouldn't know about that. The brand new, know. like the company doing the the cheap, quote unquote, legit anamorphic lenses. Um, yeah, I don't know. You're gonna have but to. I, I guess with with all of those brands again that, that we're talking about, that there's some really interesting product and the quality's there, and obviously the price is is coming down and down with all of that. But it goes back for me a bit to that support thing. So when you when you drop a lens. Yep. How long is it going to take for that to get fixed and come back to you? And it, 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 again, this thing with Canon, with the CPS stuff, like I've done mm. that probably three times since I've been stills photographer professionally, which is I don't know, 18, 19 years. And I've done that probably three times where I've dropped the camera and sheared the mount off the lens as that's what's going to hit the ground and come up. And every time it's happened, thankfully, it's been with Canon lenses and they've gone back with CPS and been back to me within the week. Mm, and I yep. just, I wonder what the process is uh, with, with these, with these brands that are coming to market now. And therefore, how does that fit into a professional working environment? Because I don't think there's any doubt that the quality is there. It's what's the support like? Yeah. As a professional tool. Well, I mean, sometimes it might not matter because of price point. Yeah. Just um, buy a new one. <laughs> yeah, the point. You know, and, and, and my, my sort of uh, signs would be how big is their social media presence? Because if it's really big, then that's their customer service connection to what you're doing. And generally, if you see a brand that is growing and um, you know becoming a name because of social, then everything rests on that social perception. And so they're about customer service. Trust me, Aperture and Deity are going to be about customer service because they have such a big social media component that if they don't handle their customer base uh, pretty quickly, then that's going to become a problem because there's some pretty loud voices out there. Um, I'm not saying that there's never a problem with their products. There are problems with their products, but they they tend to want to make sure that they're pleasing their customer. Whereas a smaller company that doesn't have a big social media presence and doesn't necessarily have a big presence here in the States aren't necessarily going to be as reliable in terms of that customer service. Those would be sort of the, you know, the red flags that I'd be looking for in terms of whether or not you're going to get pretty quick turnaround, even if they don't have a professional services program. Whereas if you own a Canon lens, I mean, if you bought L glass, you're probably spending 800 to $2,500 per lens. You expect that you're going to get some sort of service and you generally do. Um, so yeah, I mean, I, I you then know, and we, yeah. Like going back to products like with Kinefinity, which I know we, we keep referencing time and time again in, in the, yep being on some of their their um social media groups just interested to see how people are getting on with the camera and just the 
yeah. their lack of a, an infrastructure to deal with problems. I mean, it's a beautiful it's, image. It's it terrible. really is. Yeah, I mean, the thing is, it's like it creates a beautiful image. And, you know, you need a lot more Philip Blooms in the world to make that camera successful. If there's one yeah, person who, yeah. But it's, it's but it's beyond that. It's not. I think generally people are pretty accepting that it's an amazing product and it, it produces a beautiful image. But it, it's this whole thing of people not knowing where to even email, or they're emailing they're emailing mm -hmm. totally. addresses that are on the site and they're not getting responses. And then they're yeah. so I was reading a story of a guy who had. I think he was in the states. He had this problem with the communications pins for the EF mount on it, and there was a guy that like the Dutch distributor, like stepped in to try and sort. <laughs> thing out and it's kind of wow it, until that gets sorted out and you put in a proper infrastructure it just it has to my mind it has no place as a professional tool however nice the image is yeah however good the product looks yeah that's a good and they're not cheap products yeah. that they're amazing value but you know it's they're not inexpensive yeah it's still a lot of money it's a big investment uh 360 grad mm -hmm. aperture is flooding instagram with their posts but don't even try to ask them a question on instagram they never answer that might be true so I think it's more just that they have a big social media presence. So if you can get an email into the company or just the thought, we're here, you got a problem, let us know. We could talk to them. Right, you Caleb? know what we should do? We should get a, we should, we should start an <laughs> undercover show where we like make fake email addresses and start like, hey, <laughs> my light broke. <laughs> Fix it, please. And just see what happens. And then like, and That's they amazing. didn't do oh. anything. Dun, can I can I get a fake mustache and yeah. like an overcoat? You That's can, amazing. especially if you call it that. Yeah, that would be amazing. Get some cosmetics and walk around <laughs> NAB, just like yelling at Ted about your 300D, like exploding on set and what he's gonna do about it. It's <laughs> amazing. Thursday solid. <laughs> oh my god. Uh, by the way, LMC uh, sound stuff makes amazing stuff, James. They are bananas. I, that sounds so stupid, but whatever. It sounded like I should say it. Um, and duct tape and the yeah, first tape fixes everything. Yeah, for the most part, but you need some bongo ties as well. Yeah, I exactly. Yet, buy any of those. What? I haven't bought any of those yet. Have you seen the bongo Speaking ties that have a, a quarter 20 thread inside oh of them? Oh, my gosh. Really? Yeah. So, like, when you're – yeah. So, yeah. Are All we right, missing anything? I, 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 I wrote monitors. down some companies, monitors. I mean, I think we know what the disruption is, right, Caleb? Right. I mean, right now my confidence is not in these $179 to $279 monitors mainly because, again, it's like it, – you know what it boils down to for me? It boils down to the user interface. Yep. That's what it boils down to and, 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 and the features. So it's like, your winner right now. Oh, this, yeah, no question. I mean, look, I just did a, an episode on the, uh, come on, come on, kid. Where are you? <laughs> there you are. Oh, there we go. Um, I just did an episode on the Shinobi. Fantastic product, $399, amazing, really good user interface. But those pages in OS3 and small HDs monitors, ridiculous. I mean, from a production standpoint, it's so good, right, mm -hmm. Caleb? Yep. I think. I mean, UI tools wise, amazing. Um, I love what Atomos is doing and they definitely are a disruptor. Um, unfortunately, they're such a disruptor. I don't know what's going to happen with convergent design. Mm, no. Yeah. I'm great. Really great products. Them. They're amazing. Amazing products. So yeah. Quiet. Completely great quiet. engineers. Been... Yeah, well, Mitch went to Panasonic. <laughs> And Mitch isn't quiet. Yeah, that's so happened. as soon as Mitch left, he got quiet because he's not there. <laughs> oh, Mitch is great. God. I guess that's what happened. Yeah. Um, I don't know. What do you think? Uh, wait. So 360. So what other – do we have any questions here, Ben, that people are asking? Uh, let me have a little scroll through and come back to that. Good luck, part-time films, on your interview. Um, Ninja 5 is an amazing product. Uh, I'm excited to see where Swit. People yeah. keep saying Swit. Yeah. Yeah, they're kind yeah, of an interesting company. Another interesting, interesting space that we've not really covered. And how? What would you say there, Ben? That whole battery, the whole power 
supply mm. stuff, which is not particularly sexy, but it's another huge area that has just changed with that ridiculous pricing of OEM stuff and how that's all come about. Yeah. And again, there's been those brands like Swit that have come. Yeah, you know, there's a million and one. You go on Amazon for any camera model, yes. there's a million and one brands you've never heard of. But Swit has become one of those brands you trust. Yeah. SWXYZ Core Face. They're good, right? Jim? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yes. No, no, I was, I'm listening, but I was just reading somebody's comment. Okay. Uh, they are, they're great. Uh, the core, the core battery solutions are fantastic and they've got some really slim line ones. And I think that they're, they're doing some great stuff. It's not a sexy area to talk about batteries though, mm. but there's been, it's, no. I don't know if we can actually say that people are disrupting. I just think that there's finally some other companies besides Atom Bauer who are making, you know, professional battery solutions and in some different form factors. And it's kind of pushing the whole industry to have smaller, slimmer, smarter batteries. Yeah. It's, you know, the power consumption that we need on some of these cameras when we also want to power other accessories is becoming a pretty big deal. So the fact that they're doing things like you can only generally uh, travel with batteries that are, um, like 90 or 95 watt hours or, or less if you're going internationally. Yeah, 100 cap. Yeah, 100. And so what they do is they have these smart solutions now where you travel with two batteries and when you get there, you put them together and you basically have close to a 200 watt hour battery solution. Mm. Um, yeah. The sun obviously came out. What am I supposed to do? <laughs> so, um, so. Digital filmmaker, that's a great question. Has any, have you guys ever received a fake road? From no, Amazon? but I've never gotten it from Amazon, and they have a huge thing on their website, right, Caleb, about don't I, buy from, from yeah. Amazon. I, I've bought multiple, and I've not noticed any difference. <laughs> uh, so maybe we don't know. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so I'm, a question here from Jago a little mm -hmm. earlier was, what about 360 cameras when we get high resolution might be just like GoPros over capture be used to create camera movement in post replacing gimbals and fluid heads? something i have wondered about before as well mm. the tech's getting cooler like um insta 360 that company released a multiple mm. it's like what is it nine or 16 different micro four thirds cameras so that's some fat sensors for 360. yeah it is uh, but it, it's it's a pain in the ass to deal with the footage of it Still, mm. come back a few times about this kind of increased resolution to, to be looking at a a 4k viewable frame within that 360 view you're talking about insane amounts yeah. of data and huge sizes so 360 is one of, uh, makes you feel so old like i just don't want it to be a thing <laughs> you know what i mean <laughs> do you feel that way about some stuff yeah yeah completely like anime I mean, it's like anime. wow okay <laughs> We, I was talking to people, there was two or three years ago at NAB, and there was quite a lot of it around, and I was talking to various people and going, well, what, what do you see that its, it's application is at this stage? Yeah. And they're going, and this, this is people who are making the cameras, and, and it was people from um, that were involved with the, the Nokia camera. I can't remember mm -hmm. what I think it was called, the Oz. Uh, uh, oh, yeah, the, um, yeah it's, the, it's the ball. Yeah, but the, the really high-end one. Well, yeah, 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 yeah. And I was talking to some, someone on that stand there saying, well, what do you see the application of this being? And they go, I don't know. We just made the technology and like, our kids will figure that out. Because it's still like for gaming, it's great. And I can see the stuff from, from that kind of VR from that. But the 360 things so mm -hmm. far, and I watched, I watched at that same exhibition, they had a, an episode of, I think it was CSI that they'd shot in 360. But it's still all the action's happening in one place so the actual advantage of being able to pan around like, it's cool it's mm. behind me and now i want to look exactly there or i just want someone to tell me where to look which is kind of what a director does and that's how you watch tv and i don't see that really changing i can understand it like how much you can do with it and it's amazing technology i just kind of want that to be after i'm gone <laughs> so i don't have to get into that I wouldn't, that make sense? <laughs> vr sign me up i'll do vr video games get a good workout right yeah but uh yeah. i just don't want to make any content or do any educational material on it i it, I, I have a well billy billy campbell from blind spot came up with the absolutely best use of it but i i can't talk about it on this show <laughs> when I see you, remind sounds about me. right. Use your imagination. Sounds yeah, like Billy. 
You know, the problem with, 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 with uh, 360 is that it's a very hard technology to create a theatrical or even in your living room based experience. And even if you boil it down to saying we're not 200 people in a the movie theater, but it's just, you know, you and your partner and, you know, maybe kids. Um, if you try to create an experience for more than one person using that technology, it's like impossible, you know, because everybody's going to be sitting there either with a headset on and, or if you have a, it's, you're, you're kind of effed, I think. So I'm going to the same place as Caleb. We're going to die before this, hopefully. It's fantastic for video games. And you know what? If we want to use that technology, you know, and somebody like James Cameron wants to use it to basically, you know, to film things and to have that world that he can, you know, move a camera around in. I think that that's pretty awesome. But in terms of being a content creator myself and then experiencing it, um, I don't know. Yeah, wireless headphones, just all of the wireless. Come on, let's yep. go already. The Sennheiser wireless kit is incredible. For, for headphones? Tank. No, the the new. Um, oh, the little those new, little. New they look like product. batteries. They look They're like incredible. giant. They look like giant double A batteries. I just I, use I'm, them today for the first time. I can't wait to use those, and they're so small. You hold uh, hold a button on each one. They just boom. I'm linked. USB C yeah. charging. They're light. It's it's amazing. They, they so make good. the they make the road filmmaker kit look like you're lugging around two refrigerators or or I'm yeah. sorry, two original Ursa minis. Uh, <laughs> Ursus. Oh, oh, oh snap! He just made it. He just like Ursus. slapped. He just, he just slapped Road in the face. Then no, I didn't. Him in the groin. <laughs> no, I didn't. Yes, yeah, you did. No, I and didn't. Ursa. I love Road. You said I Ursa called... Mini, then you upgraded it to the original. <laughs> <laughs> well, compared to the like, Sennheiser, oh, yeah, dude, no, no way. You're top of the hut. No, com <laughs> compared to the original. I'm so glad I'm. It's you on the big screen because people won't know it's really me. I, uh, maybe they will. Okay. Uh, By the way, I just want to go back. That's so messed up. Um, I do. There's a great. Oh, so this is a totally disrelated question, but Dan is just like firing them off like crazy. This might be a weird noob question. When you're monitoring, checking audio, how do you factor in the volume in your headphone slash speakers? Dan, you don't factor in the volume. You mm -hmm. set your volume in your headphones or your speakers to a comfortable listening level. Never trust the levels of your monitoring. Always trust your audio meters. Audio meters don't lie and neither do scopes. And that's yep. the thing we always have to remember. Just look at your scopes or look at your audio meters and they are the, oh, but, no, but then, but, but no, then. Big is, but. Okay. But the caveat to that being that you need to do both. You can never rely on audio meters because yeah. you don't know, all you're seeing is what the level is. You're not seeing what that comprises of. If you've got a cable that's got a short in it and you've got- Oh, totally. Gone, oh, you have to monitor, gone. yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Just to make that point, you can't you can't do one or the other. You got to do both, but for level yes. you got to use the the meter. Yes. Yeah, so your headphones or your speakers are set to a comfortable listening level, but you can't like people will, they'll they'll adjust their levels for their headphones or their speakers, you know, and then they have a false perception that the recording is louder or it's quieter, but it's the meters that are telling you that. Um, yeah. what is would you say the Sennheiser option that looks like the lipstick containers. Yes, the lipstick. Yes, that That's one. the one we're talking about. Those are, the I can't AV, wait to try those. Is it the AX, AVX? Well, the AVX oh, is the original. AVX is the original one where they had that XLR receiver that's like right angle, which is pretty amazing. Um, but these are the new ones that have come into the golden. Uh, I don't know if Ben said that, 360 grad. I did, oh, I did say that. Oh, I did say that. Uh, Slavic came in. It's the XSW-D. It's these so things. Slavic, yeah. Cheap. Oh, Cheap. here he goes. The golden I just, child. I just had him charging. Here he is. Oh, my gosh. Amazing. XLR. I just leave this living in, plugged in my, uh, to turn it on and link it up. Like you just go. Buy from Ann Summers. Oh, my goodness. Oh. Other people in the UK understand that. Joke. Oh, and, and then price point. <laughs> and then price point wise, right, uh, Caleb, we're talking yeah. about disrupting because they're competing with everybody else on these with these. They, products, they get right? you on the mic if you if you want to buy it with the mic. OK, another. Well, it's only fifty dollars more. But what is it? Four ninety nine or three ninety nine? Three ninety nine. Yeah. 
That's not no, they're, bad. They're wonderful. There's one button on them, but you can still mute. What's the range like? Uh, pretty solid. I mean, I, I never mm -hmm. like did the whole like let me walk across three football fields and. Yeah, it's two point four gigahertz though, right? It's similar to the road and the and and the deity in terms of uh, it's not a yeah yeah yeah. Now the deity is a whole nother ball game. That new deity kit, um, that puppy can do multiple uh, frequencies. Wow! Um, and multiple, it's got like a gazillion options for all that stuff, and that has the, like the two receiver or two transmitters, one receiver, the whole thing. <laughs> You're getting getting worked on. Oh my that, god! Uh, so, yeah, this is this is the mistake yeah. of not lighting my my episode today. But I have to run after this, so I am trying to be smart. Right. And well, speaking of which, we are we are more or less at time. Oh my goodness! So I'm kind of so it's yeah it's it's come around quick again. So apologies for all my ridiculous techie issues this week. This is the saddest sight you've ever seen. I wish I had like a mirror that I could show we now what I'm filming myself with, which is a webcam, which is balanced on top of an empty whiskey bottle. Perfect. Which is balanced on top of a Kleenex box. And we're That's not exactly why it sounds box like we're ready. My computer, but we'll <laughs> I love it. Sounds it. like we're ready. Sounds like we're ready for an AB, <laughs> a whiskey bottle and a and a box of Kleenex. I don't even know what that exactly. means, but yeah. I mean that's amazing. <laughs> the grumpy penguin is <laughs> is a dude. Um, we've got uh, just really some great handles here now, and uh, some new some newcomers. I don't think Sky's been on the show before, uh, so uh, is is Trevor new? Maybe um, just some new people hanging out here. And thank you for spending uh, your time yeah. with those guys. Those yeah, uh, really are new. Good. Thank you so much for joining. Oh yes, can you subscribe to Ben's YouTube channel yet? I don't know. Three sixty. Yeah, you Red. can. You can subscribe to it. There's not very much gets put on it, but you can subscribe to it. It's there. <laughs> it's a bit to work on. <laughs> no, I will because so I'm good. I am going to film this this next uh, trip to Norway and uh, sort of the the whole setting up for that because that, mm. that's going to be interesting again. And you I'm could gonna, probably that's, that's gonna, gonna be what I'm gonna film on and put yeah. on that channel. You could probably just do like else. packing for shoots, how you pack for each shoot, each like, bag, and you could like become a big deal. People kill for that stuff. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or maybe that's what we'll base it on then. Me packing. Which is we've but what I've been doing all afternoon. It was just there you go. all over the floor. But yeah, we'll do that. All right, gents. It's one minute past one in the morning. So past Oof. my bedtime. Oh, okay. Final messages, gents. Um, just thanks for coming to the channel. Please subscribe. Uh, tap the bell if you want notifications, but it's pretty easy, at least on this channel. New content every Wednesday. New episode of Gearbox. New episode of Cameron Flask. One is in the morning. One is in the evening, at least Pacific time. And uh, over to Caleb. Ben, thank you for staying awake for us. Jem, yes. uh, good to see you and Ben as always. And uh, here's you the, the log of woolen ladies. Yes, to the to the ladies. Yeah. Your wives are amazing. Mine is too. And your wife, Ben. I still and your that. wife. <laughs> yes. May we all may we all have dinner someday in some extravagant country together. I and uh, that would be amazing. And I'll, I'll give you guys an update on uh, Sunday or Monday about uh, Lotus as I am to make sure that it's still on par for our uh, Friday night dinner pre-NAB. All right, gents? All the best, everybody. Thank you Thank so you much for coming, guys. All right, thanks. <laughs> Cheers. Bye, everybody.